always. She is busy and in a hurry. She is always busy these days. I worry she flirts with the flames of the sun and does not know to fear the fire. My heart and I have barely spoken. She strains her spines both day and night, pouring through tomes and hatching her schemes. Her eyes are fixed on the next rank, and the next after that. I fear for her. A soul without rest grows dim as twilight. No, she has not. All to the good, I guess. A finless fish weakens the shoal. But enough about me. You, my friend, are a mighty swimmer. Seek her out in her stone-dwelling place. If I know my heart, she will certainly have a task for you. surprise. Always pleasure to see you, Sarah. I'm glad you dropped by. I could use a friend right now. I just received a summons from the council. Typically, I'd be overjoyed. After all, I just submitted a petition for advancement to Oathman. But the council never acts on petitions this quickly. Someone's arranging pieces on the game board. I know it. If a member of the house plans to spring a trap, I need to project strength. The counselors know you've assisted me in the past. If you appear before the mouths on my behalf, it puts the magisters and I on equal footing. It might even save my life. Thank you, my friend. Be careful. Patron, Magister Gothrin, opposes any further honors for the slave girl. Oh, look, the lizard sent a representative. Such pretensions. Approach, Emissary. You may inform your benefactress, Sun in Shadow, that the Council has elected to reject her petition. Be sure to add that all further petitions will meet the same fate. Cats and lizards have no place in our great house. Honestly, Rolasa. Don't worry, Rolasa. The emissary will give Sun and Shadow a full account of this meeting. I have no doubt. There is no greater virtue than ambition, but I'm afraid Sun and Shadow's enthusiasm has rubbed a few of our number the wrong way. Beyond the obvious? Your friend possesses a keen mind and great natural talent. But even the great house Telvani is not above simple prejudice. The circumstances of her birth make advancement complicated. I would counsel patience, but I have no illusions. Sun and Shadow will dismiss such advice out of hand. Her dreams can only be deferred for so long. I say only this. Whatever she plans to do, make sure she does it cautiously. Yes, Rilasa hates practically everyone, but she's developed a particular distaste for Sun and Shadow. I can't tell if it's truly the will of Gothrin or just a personal vendetta. Both of them revile lesser races. A perfect match if ever there was one. Sun and Shadow will stand before us again. I only hope that it's for a promotion and not something less pleasant. Believe it or not, these meetings can go far worse. 
Honor to you and your house, Sarah. Farewell. Be sure to add that all further petit dam. Where Don't are worry, those Melissa. come to have words with me, have you? Well, let's get it over with. I have things to do. I merely speak for Musera Gothrin. His distaste for sun and shadow should come as no surprise. Beasts have no place in the house. You may want to rethink the company you keep, Outlander. Just a bit of advice. I suggest she leave Bardenfell. Travel to Daggerfall or Wayrest and join the Mage's Guild. I hear they take anyone. She would fit right in. The fact is, she has no place here. She may have earned her freedom, but she will never be a true Telvanni. I don't hate them. I just see the truth of their nature. Argonians and Khajiit make wonderful servants, but to pretend they possess the same faculties as Myr, or even men, is absurd. They were born to serve, just as we were born to rule. Sorry. I grew tired of waiting. I received more than a few sideward glances on my way over. What happened in there? Oh, I see. Maybe I was too impatient. Requested it too soon. Damn! Did they give any reason? Was there anyone who spoke out against it? Of course it was Velasa. That pig has hated me from the start. Gothrin's not fond of Argonians. But this is clearly personal. Would you act as my emissary once more? If you go to tell Arun and speak to Gothrin directly, maybe he can settle this. I'll answer what I can, of course. Most Telvanni magisters prefer to be left alone. They dislike and mistrust each other. So they appoint mouths to handle business outside their towers. Of course, the magister's wishes and the mouth's wishes often get tangled. It's imperfect. Just trust me, it's better this way. If the counselors had to deal with each other directly, there would be no peace in Vardenfell. You wouldn't jam a bunch of aelids into a pen together. Mages need room to stretch, room to breathe. I never said House Delvani was perfect. We take the good with the bad. When I sit on the council, I'll put things right. How's that? Yes. When I achieve the rank of Oathman, I should be able to purchase a slave. I'll free Eoki and we'll toast to our success. That is what we've been working toward, right? I know that some of this feels a little unsavory, but it's necessary. A Telvanni mage doesn't have time to be troubled. Every day I learn something new. Every day I peel back one mystery to reveal another ten beneath it. If this is the price of that kind of discovery, I'll pay it. Oh, that came out poorly. I... never mind. Magister Guthrin reigns over Tel Arum, the fungal tower west of here. He has a sour reputation, but remains one of the most powerful mages in Tamriel. I never had cause to work for him, but Yoki did. He doesn't like to talk about it. I'd be lying if I said yes, but if there's anyone who could get through to him, it's you. Gothrin keeps a few pupils, henchmen more like. You probably have to get through one or two before he'll deign to speak with you. Just be careful.
Tell Arun's You got Nick spit in your ears? Tell Arun's closed. Jog off, you fetchin' in chow. Yeah? Well, I need a stiff drink and a good plow, but you don't see me knocking on strangers' doors, belly aching about it. Magister Gothrin's not seeing any visitors. Not today, not tomorrow, and not next week. So shove off, go off face. <laughs> Disobeying orders, eh? Yeah, that sounds like Rolasa. Skeevy little Nick's always sliming around the tower, jamming pies in her gob and pushing us around. To do mark with her. Go ahead. But if I find out you're lying, I'll put a knife in your eye. Jack's head. She stopped at four drinks last night. Arith, Giravel, I've had enough of your excuses. Relasa made your task plain. Find those thieves. I'm sorry, Magister. It will be done. Whatever it is you want, talk to my cringing assistant. Ah, oh, greetings. I I'm sorry you had to see that. Magister Gothrin is really quite charming once you get to know him. Honestly, he wouldn't have yelled if Rolasa's little snoop, Captain Giravel, hadn't interfered. Ah, that. I I'm sorry, but Rolasa is determined to keep your Argonian from advancing. <laughs> Typical. I should be mouth. Say, I might have an idea. The thieves Mathsera Gothrin mentioned fled to Shashpilamat. Could you retrieve the goods they stole? Spoken like a true Telvani. If you bring the goods to me in Sadrath Mora, I'll take credit for their safe return. Relas has gone to great lengths to discredit me, you see. My Sarah knows this. If I succeed, he'll see that I am the fitter servant. Sarah Gothrin will undoubtedly promote me to mouth. Then, in exchange for your help, I'll support your Argonian's petition. One good turn and all that. What do you say? I can't wait to see the look on Rolasa's face when Muthsera Gothrin strips her of her title. And the groveling, the groveling will be delicious. Of course, uh, what can the future mouth of Muthsera Gothrin help you with? A great many things, I'm sorry to say. They pilfered an ancient tome, a rare pendant, and a purse full of gold. Of course, my master was most aggrieved by the loss of several slaves. Strong workers, all. Sarah Gothrin is sick with worry. No, of course not. I didn't mean to assume. Truth be told, I've always been a fierce but very quiet proponent of beast rights. If you return the tome, pendant, and gold, I think Sarah Gothrin will still promote me, albeit with a heavy heart. Well, I can't say for sure, but there's a good chance the missing slave stole Muthsera Gothrin's property before fleeing Tel Arun. Ropefish and other people smugglers sometimes accept magic items as payment. I'm sure I wouldn't know. My master has a kind and gentle disposition, but children sometimes need discipline, yes? It would really be Slave Master Arenum's prerogative. Unfortunately, she can be... irascible. You should know by now that Telvani alliances often start as fluid affairs. Uh, not that our relationship is fluid. What we've got going here? Rock solid. Sun in Shadow's intentions align with my own. It only makes sense that we should be partners.
Take this report to Mouth Rolasa immediately. Yes, Captain. It will be done. What do you want? You stink of incense and hookah smoke. Did that beast Gothren send you? We are not goods. Zashanti and her friends prepare to leave this cursed island. No more lashings, no more bitter food. Only the light of the moons drifting across the Topal Sea. We only took Gothren's belongings to pay the smugglers. Bright moons. This one thanks you, Walker. We stored Gothrin's trinkets in crates nearby. The smugglers will groan at their absence, but we would rather face the wilds alone than go back to tell Arun. Wait! What was that noise? Greetings, Outlander. Cedera Rolasa sends her regards. Gathering up these slaves on our own would have been exhausting. No, no, no! Damned cats! You lot are going back to tell Arun! Move out! You heard the captain. Get moving, Kerr. No! Darsha will not go! Darsha is free at last. Don't kick yourself over Rolasa outmaneuvering you. Trust me, you never had a chance. Of course. You didn't think she'd let that flat-headed Aerith out nix her, did you? Oh, and don't bother looking for those other stolen goods. My troops have the situation well in hand. Thanks for all your help, Noir. So long.
Once again, it's been a pleasure. Farewell, Sun and Shadow. There you are. I'm glad you're back. I just had a fruitful conversation with our friend Aerith. Seems that I'm not the only one Rolasa's holding back. I think it might be time for a less conventional strategy. I underestimated Rolasa. I see that now. She plays the game far better than I do. The only way to win a game like this is to eliminate the player. I know how it sounds. I take no pleasure in it. It's just an unfortunate necessity. Half the Telvanni hierarchy arranged an opening at some point in their rise to power. If you deal with Relasa, Aerith takes her place. It's the best place, Sarah. I knew you'd see reason. Trust me, no one deserves this fate more than Relasa. You may have a Delvani's heart after all. Aerith told me that Relasa entered her room in the Council House just a few minutes ago. Good luck, my friend. Be discreet. Looking for that evil tempered Telvani witch. She went into that room. So, the lizard thinks she can kill me? Come on then! I'll have her skin for gloves. After I deal with you, of course.
It's done? Thank you, Sarah. Not many people would take a life for their friends. At least I hope we're friends. The house? It makes it difficult to tell sometimes. Aerith and I spoke just moments ago. Things should move quickly. Aerith assures me that the Council will accept my petition now. So yes, I'd call this a success. Hopefully no one will give me cause to do this again in the future. Once again, you have my thanks, Sarah. I hope you will consider working with me again. <laughs>